Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because we are going to be talking about 2020 launches that we've all forgotten about. Maybe not all of us, but I definitely forgot about these launches. I saw Smoky Glow do this video and I really enjoyed watching it. I thought it was a really fun concept so I wanted to do it myself. I was going through Trend Moods Instagram and there was a lot that launched this year that I completely forgot about. There were also a lot of launches that I had no idea even launched in the first place. I'm not going to include those in this video I'm gonna include the launches that I did know about and just you know completely forgot existed there were a couple where I actually was interested in purchasing and then forgot about them like in a week so I hope you are having a good start to your new year and without further ado let's just get right into it there was a lot here so I probably won't talk about all of them but yeah I want to get started because I want to cram as much in as possible so I'm gonna shift over so that I can put my little screenshots up here. So I'm gonna go in chronological order. The first launch that I wanna talk about is the Morphe Brushes and Ponies Makeup Collaboration. I was actually really interested in this palette. I thought the pastels were really pretty. The reason that I did not pick it up is because pastels are kind of hard to do and Morphe's quality is just super dodgy, so I skipped it. And I'm really happy I did skip it because I completely forgot this existed like three weeks after it launched. I saw a few people using it on Instagram that had received it in PR, but other than that I didn't really see any big YouTubers talking about it. I think people are in general a lot less inclined to talk about Morphe just because of the whole Morphe pusher thing. People don't want to be considered a Morphe pusher so they just avoid talking about it and I think this is one of those examples. And yeah I really like the color story. I really like the pastels. I think for a 35 pan palette this is one of Morphe's better launches but it probably didn't have the quality to be like a super talked about hyped up palette. had Chinese food for lunch so I am so thirsty oh my goodness the next collection that I want to talk about is by KKW Beauty and it is the Celestial Sky collection I feel like honestly most of KKW Beauty's launches are super forgetful because they all just look the exact same but I remember this one in particular because I was really interested in the five pan palettes and it was announced in the middle of February of 2020 and since I was interested in the five pan palettes I thought to myself oh well I'm going to San Francisco at the end of February. We don't have Ulta in Canada so I was hoping that I could like look at these in store at Ulta when I went and then we went to Ulta and I completely forgot about this collection. I don't even think it was on the stand like in a little KKW beauty stand in Ulta. I don't even think it was there. So in the span of a month and a half I completely forgot that this collection even existed and that I wanted to pick it up. I just really wanted to be introduced to the brand and I really liked the idea of having you know like a blush trio and then a smaller eyeshadow palette. Products that weren't like super big where I could still test out the brand and kind of test out the formulas and see if it's something that I'd be interested in further purchasing. However, clearly I completely forgot about this launch and uh, yeah, that's why this year I started being a little more choosy about what I purchased. I used to be the type of person that would go out right on launch day and purchase something and I found as a result of that I had a lot of regrets. But since I wait so long to purchase things, I wait to watch reviews, I wait till other people have tested it and if I still want it after you know like a certain amount of time then I'll pick it up but I feel like I have a lot fewer regrets that way and honestly I just don't want things in my collection that I'm gonna forget about in a month and a half I don't know okay another launch I feel like I was super interested in all of these it's the Valentine's Day collection from Melt Cosmetics I remember being super into that millennial pink palette and I completely forgot about it honestly looking at it now I don't really like the color story like at all. I much prefer the Melt Cosmetics She's in Parties palette. If I was gonna try Melt Cosmetics, that's probably the palette I would go for. So I'm really happy that I didn't pick this up because the color story is just kind of strange in my opinion. It's just not as cohesive as other Melt Cosmetics palettes in my opinion. Oh, it's Millennial Pinks, not Millennial Pink with an X. Interesting. But yeah, now I would definitely be more inclined to purchase the She's in Parties palette or even the Radioactive Pressed Pigment palette I'd be interested in. But this color story just really isn't for me. But looking at the reviews, I'm glad I didn't purchase this palette just because a lot of reviewers say that the formula is hard to work with and hard to blend. So I'm glad I didn't pick this up. And yeah, even the color story now, I'm like, girl, what were you thinking? Why did you even want that? And then it completely 
left my memory pretty quickly actually. I probably as soon as Valentine's Day was over, this palette was like out of sight, out of mind. Next up are some palettes. I, I look at a lot of palettes, as you can tell. Eyeshadow is my jam. So any new eyeshadow palettes, I'm like all about it. So that's why the majority of the products I'm talking about today are going to be eye products. I remember thinking that these were so cute. I loved all the holiday, or not holiday, Valentine's Day launches that happened last year. This was by Makeup Revolution and it was the Heartbreakers collection and they were just little monochromatic nine pin palettes. Kind of similar to ColourPop, but honestly, but honestly after Valentine's Day, these were just super forgettable to me. I feel like if I was going to go for a monochromatic palette, this is how I feel now looking back but at the time I was really interested in these. What stopped me is Makeup Revolution is kind of hard to come by in Canada so I didn't get to see them in store. I'm not really a big online shopper for makeup especially not drugstore makeup where the quality can be kind of dodgy. I really want to feel it in store. So if I was gonna go for like a cheap monochromatic palette I'd probably go with Colourpop because I feel like that's the safer alternative and I feel like these honestly just duped Colourpop pretty closely so so now I don't feel like I'm missing out on much because I have most of these palettes but in Colourpop's formula because they sent them to me but at the time I really wanted these and again just as soon as Valentine's Day was over I completely forgot these existed. I think it's a packaging thing. I think the hearts just really got to me and I really wanted these. So weird because like in the span of a year my makeup taste has changed like so much. I would not be interested in these this year like at all. Okay so I do remember this one launching and I did remember that it existed but I feel like this demonstrates just the insane amount of disconnect that I have between the beginning of 2020 and the end of 2020. This is the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette. Tell me how this launched in 2020. I don't understand. I totally thought this was like a February of 2019 launch. It just seems like there's so much time in between February of 2020 and December of 2020. I didn't understand. I was like, there's no way that was a 2020 launch. But according to Trend Mood, it totally was a 2020 launch. And I just, I remembered it existed, but I definitely thought it was a 2019 or even 18 launch. Like I thought this was years ago. <laughs> So I definitely remembered it existed, but I kind of wanted to do like an honorable mention because that one just kind of like blew my mind. Feels like it's been years ago. I also think this palette just wasn't really talked about. I know a lot of people in the beauty community didn't really review it because Jaclyn doesn't review anyone from the beauty community's products. So it's kind of like tit for tat, I guess. I know a lot of influencers that did feel this way. So I feel like for that reason, I did kind of forget that it was a 2020 launch instead of something a lot earlier. But yeah, I thought that was totally crazy and I didn't know where to fit this into a video. So I'm just gonna put it in this one. I just can't believe how long and short 2020 was at the same time. Next up is a collection by Milani and it is the Milani collab with Salt and Peppa. I totally wanted this. I really liked the 90s vibes, even though I was alive during the 90s, but like I'm a 1995 baby. So I don't really remember the 90s very much, but I thought this was gonna be like super hyped up a lot more so than it was. And I ended up forgetting about this in like a matter of probably days. But yeah, I think I just wanted this for the hype that I thought it was gonna get. And then when it didn't receive any hype, I kind of forgot about it and just never purchased it. And honestly, probably would have regretted this purchase had I gotten it. And this is why you wait. If you still want something after a few months, then you purchase it. But like these impulse purchases, not about it anymore. The next collection is one from Essence and I remember really wanting this yet again. They're all collections that I was super interested in and then just like left my mind pretty quickly. This is the Essence Cosmetics High Beauty that has hemp seed oil in it. I love hemp. I love like cannabis products. I feel like it's, you know, it's trendy right now. And I really like CBD oils. I really like like all that kind of stuff. Hemp, my jam, love it, especially in beauty products. So when those two worlds come together, I'm all about it. And I honestly probably would have still tried this, but the reason I think I forgot about this one is because I literally never saw it in stores. I had a big essence stand at the drugstore where I was living throughout 2020 and I never saw this once on display, which is strange because I totally thought that this would be something that was also hyped up. I know e.l.f. launched a CBD line and a lot of people were reviewing it and interested in it. So I was kind of surprised when this didn't receive the same interest. I feel like I was the only one interested in it and I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I just stopped looking because I forgot about it. This one kind of defies the trend of me not wanting to try it. Like I would still be interested in trying products from this line 
if I could find it, but alas, I can't, so. Okay, so the next launch is one by ColourPop. Honestly, I feel like ColourPop just launches so many things that a lot of their collections are super forgettable. This one especially, I don't know why, but I just completely forgot that this existed. This is the what's it even called? The Celestial Collection. It came with two eyeshadow palettes, two blushes, and some Luxe glosses it looks like. I think I just forgot about these because it's super basic and I think the packaging is pretty and ColourPop does launch like a lot of basic products but I think this collection like the packaging is a little basic for ColourPop so I feel like for that reason it's something that I forgot about. Just super basic like across the board nothing crazy just two eyeshadow palettes two blushes and some glosses so there was nothing that really stood out to me. I do remember this launching and I thought oh that's pretty packaging but like it's nothing that stood out to me, I guess. And that's the reason I forgot it in a matter of weeks because after two weeks, another ColourPop launch would have probably been announced. So I think if ColourPop launched less collections, it would make their collections a lot more memorable. Oh, next up is another Morphe product. Maybe it's because Morphe is just a brand that I don't use, but I feel like there was a lot of forgettable Morphe launches this year. This was the, I don't even know what that is. What's it even called? It was for Pride 2020. It was like the small 10 pan. Well, I don't know why I said pan like that. 10 pan glitter palette. Oh, 10 G glisten up. It's right on the packaging. Apparently I'm a little slow this morning. It's Monday, forgive me. But yeah, maybe it's just because I don't buy a lot of Morphe just because the quality is not consistent and I'm still salty that they took me off PR. So uh, yeah, this one was just a super forgettable one for me. I feel like there's so many rainbow palettes that I would have sooner purchased than this one that I just completely forgot about it almost immediately. Next up is one by Fenty. I feel like I didn't hear a lot of people talking about it and I think that's why, sorry, I'm so itchy my shoulder. Oh my goodness. But yeah, I didn't hear a lot of people talking about about this so I feel like that's why I forgot about it. It's the Fenty Pro Kisser Lip Balm. Not the original. I remember the original launching but I didn't remember the fact that there were colors launched. They like added to their line and they did a bunch of neutral lip balm shades. Looking at this now I vaguely remember them launching and I would be interested now. I like the fact that it's like a lip balm that's in like a tube that has an applicator. I just I don't know why I don't remember these. I guess because not a lot of people have talked about them but I would be interested in trying this now. If you've tried it, let me know. Is it good? Should I try it? But yeah, I completely forgot about this launch, which is interesting because I'm kind of interested in trying it. So I don't know why I forgot about it, but I definitely did. Next, I'm not even sure if I knew that these did launch. To be honest, I think I did know, but I don't remember paying much attention to these. They are the Dominique Cosmetics Liquid Eyeshadows. Looking at these first, I was surprised because I didn't think I knew about these, but the more I think about it, the more I do vaguely remember this. I just feel like there's a lot more pretty liquid eyeshadows that are kind of, you know, duochrome, super pigmented, super metallic, and these just don't look like they're gonna be it. I don't know. I also heard almost no one talking about them, and I feel like Dominique Cosmetics is a brand that I do hear people talk about at least a little bit, but these liquid shadows, I just heard nothing about, so I guess they just completely left my memory the minute they entered. I'm not really huge into liquid shadows right now so I probably wasn't looking to purchase anyway but yeah I don't know just kind of a weird one that I was like did I know that existed? I'm just not sure. I couldn't tell you. Okay, one brand. I forgot an entire brand launched. How did I do that? I don't know. And I find this interesting because I really like her, but Lauren Conrad's beauty brand. I remember this. I didn't know it launched already. I do remember it being announced though, and I was kind of like rolling my eyes like, oh, another celeb beauty brand. But I have heard literally nothing zilch, zip about this one. Again, if you've tried it, let me know because I am definitely interested in hearing something about it. But yeah, I don't know. I just didn't even know that this had launched in 2020. I just thought that it was announced and we were still waiting for it to launch, I guess. I thought it would be kind of like a rare situation, like when Rare Beauty launched, everyone and their mother was reviewing it. I just thought it would kind of be more like that. And it definitely was not because it launched without me even knowing about it. So yeah, I'll have to search on YouTube to see if anyone's reviewed it because I'd be interested in seeing how the products perform, but it's just a brand that I completely forgot about until I was going through Trendwood's feed the other day and saw that it had already launched. Like, that's just crazy to me. How did I miss that? A whole brand? And you call yourself a beauty YouTuber? Who are you? I'm talking to myself. 
if that wasn't clear. Okay, so moving into fall, one launch that I definitely did not remember is the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice Palette. And I do remember, I did know about this one because I put on my stories, I'm so surprised that no brand has come out with a scented pumpkin spice palette yet. And then the next day this was announced. So I definitely knew about this one, but I just completely, <laughs> completely forgot about it. I feel like I completely forgot about it because I kind of, in my mind, for some reason, associated it with the gingerbread spice palette. And I feel like the gingerbread spice was just way more talked about. So I just completely forgot about this one. I don't know if that makes sense. I kind of like meshed them both together in my brain and just remembered the gingerbread and completely forgot about the pumpkin. If you tried this palette, let me know because I would definitely be interested, but I don't understand the color story really. Like I don't get why there's purples in a pumpkin spice palette. I don't really get that. Another one that I completely forgot. I mean, obviously I've completely forgot about all of these launches. That's what the video is about. I don't know why I keep saying that. But another launch is the Nikki Tutorials and Beauty Bay palette. I think the reason I forgot about this one was because I just hate it so much. I hate the color story. Like, I'm sorry. I really like Nikki. I do. I hate the packaging and I hate the color story. I don't know. I don't like it. Why are all of the shimmers like the exact same color is what I don't understand. And the color story just looks really chaotic to me. Like everything is just all over the place. I feel like if the blues were kind of kept together and the reds were kind of kept together and the champagnes were kind of kept together, I feel like it would be a lot more cohesive. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but this palette just screams scatterbrain to me. You know, I already got enough going on up here. I don't need to look at this and get me more stressed out. <laughs> so I think for that reason, since I really disliked this palette, just the way it was set up, I think that's the reason I forgot about it. It was probably like a pressing thing like oh I remember that pa oh I hated it just put it to the back of the mind put it to the back of the mind next up is another collab it's the Sigma Beauty and Stephanie Lange the essentials palette I just feel like this layout personally is very 2015 with the larger eyeshadow pan and like the three smaller ones it reminds me of those Too Faced tin palettes that were really popular back in the day but I did hear quite a few people talking about it actually. Not quite a few, but like a decent amount. It's a no for me and for that reason I guess I forgot about it, but I definitely did know that this existed. I just, yeah, I guess just because it's not for me. It's just kind of a boring launch, I guess, especially with like all the cool concepts that have launched in 2020. I just think that this one was just really forgettable. Next up is the BH Cosmetics Holiday Collection. Those two palettes I completely forgot existed. I do remember seeing them and thinking, oh, that's interesting. That's probably not what I thought at all. I don't think this is interesting. I just think like the mere size of the collection, I think it got lost in all of the cool concepts that were launched for holiday 2020, most notably the Kylie and Grinch collection. I know that was like a super, like that was one to remember. This one just kind of fell flat and in comparison to everything else that was being launched, it was just like so much at once. I think I personally completely forgot about this one. Next one I did forget about, but it was kind of a more recent launch. So I'm kind of surprised that I already forgot about it. It's the Catrice and Essence and Disney collaboration. I do remember knowing about this one because I thought it was interesting that two brands collab with Disney. I just think that these color stories are just so beyond basic that it must have just slipped my mind, I guess. I also haven't seen these in stores. They probably won't come to Canada. So for that reason, I think I completely forgot about them. I feel like they're just really neutral palettes and then they have like one pop of the color corresponding to the Disney princess. So I don't know, I just think it's a little bit boring, but I do remember I did know about it because I remember thinking, oh, that's interesting that both Catrice and Essence are collaborating. Like that just seemed like weird to me, I don't know. And I did like the packaging, I do remember that, but clearly this was a forgettable launch because it was more recently announced and I just completely forgot about it until I was scrolling Treadmoon's feed. Okay, this one's kind of funny. I discussed it in my last video. It's the holiday, one of the holiday collections from ColourPop, the Big Poppy collection. I saved that collection for this video and then I got it in the mail and I did a video on it. I do still stick to that opinion. I do think it was a very forgettable launch. I feel like if I didn't get it in PR, it would have left my memory pretty soon after it launched, especially because ColourPop already announced their first collection of 2021. Like, we're four days in. I totally would have forgotten about this pretty soon after it launched because there's already so much from ColourPop that's gonna be launched. So yeah, I think if I hadn't received, oh, sorry, my shoulder, it's really itchy again. I think a big thing for me is the fact that it's all mattes. There's no sparkly, glittery shimmers to really catch my eye. So I think that's a big reason as to why I forgot about it. 
until I got it in the mail. <laughs> and it's also warm neutrals, so it's super basic things that we see all the time, so I think that's the reason I forgot about it. And the last collection I want to talk about is by Buxom, and it's their White Russian collection. It's inspired by their White Russian, I think it's a gloss. I did have it at one point, but my best friend stole it from me. I found it in her makeup bag a couple months ago, and I was like, mm, I don't even want it back at this point. It's all gross. So I did really like that gloss, but yeah, this collection's just super boring and super basic. The packaging, it doesn't even seem like it's white Russian related. I get the color story because it has like a blush that matches, or is that a highlighter? I don't know but it also has like a matching lipstick. The palette's pretty neutral, so it kind of all goes. It's very cohesive. I just think that it's super basic and done before. So I feel like that's why I already forgot about this because I remember seeing it and thinking, oh, I really like that lip gloss. I wonder where it is. Oh yeah, it's in my best friend's disgusting makeup bag. So I do remember that. That's the only reason I remember that this collection even launched. And it was announced December 20th of 2020. So that was like, what, only like two weeks ago? Mm, not good, not good. Anyway, those are all of the launches that I completely forgot existed in 2020. What about you? Is there anything that you completely forgot about? I feel like especially in 2020, this is applicable because everything just seems to kind of blur together. Like there's a lot that I forgot about, not just makeup launches. So maybe if it was any other year, I would not have forgotten about it. But this year, I definitely clearly did. Anyway, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps me out. If you don't, that's okay. I really appreciate you being here. It really helps my channel out just you watching my videos, so thank you. Please leave any video requests in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.